his, his designs for our first cannon, what do you think? Uh, uh, not, nice drawings, Eddie. Uh, I, I see how we're going to make it out of stuff around the barnyard, but I don't, I don't recognize those two round things on either side of the cannon. Oh, those are wheels. Yeah, those are the wheels from the baby carriage of Olga Bone Marrow's baby sister. Yeah. Really? I, I, I didn't recognize them there in the drawing, Eddie. Yeah, I just hope Olga Bone Marrow doesn't recognize them. <laughs> but it's all right. Her baby sister's only three months old, so it's not like she's going anywhere. <laughs> Should we build it? Of course we built it. It was our first cannon. Let me describe it to you if I can. The body of the cannon was a sewer pipe. <laughs> and this was resting on a bed of two by ones and 11 by 17s, four by three, <laughs> seven and eight. I thought I told you I grew up poor, all right? <laughs> These were all held together with bailing wire and. And, and, and duct tape and glue and, and, and clothes pins and then all of this blended into a single symmetrical unity approaching perfection and on either side there were beautiful almost new baby carriage wheels. <laughs> to get into the spirit of a first cannon we immediately put on our muskrat skin hats which we had sewn up ourselves. I have one right here. <laughs> here we go. Still fits. <laughs> oh, I, I sense, sir, that he's an outdoorsman right here. He's kind of shaking his head. I, I'm sorry. You, you recognize that while the body of the cap is indeed pure muskrat, this is not a muskrat tail, is it? <laughs> what can I tell you? The neighbor's cat was almost <laughs> dead by then. I told you, I grew up poor. <laughs> we got on our bicycles and with cannon firmly in tow behind us, we headed down to the local golf course where the fairway would serve as a firing range and one of the putting greens would be our target. <laughs> Luckily, uh, it was completely deserted because no one in Blight could afford to go golfing anyway. <laughs> so we began the loading procedure. Now, the first thing we did was we took an Alberta peach can full of black powder, and we poured it into that sewer pipe, just like that. Oh, I should probably point out here that black powder and, and, and other dangerous weapons were readily available to young people when I was growing up. <laughs> Thank goodness times have changed. I got the black powder at Grogan's War Surplus. Oh, no, no, he had a very strict policy about selling dangerous war surplus to juveniles. Now, if you wanted to, uh, Oh, get a hold of, let's say, black powder or a Gatling gun or <laughs> machete. You had to have attained a certain height. <laughs> Tall enough to put your money on the counter. <laughs> I should point out here that a croquet ball had been commandeered from Eddie's backyard for use as shot. <laughs> In the enthusiasm of the moment, we thought the croquet ball could eventually be returned <laughs> to the set. The last just proved somewhat optimistic. Uh, we noticed that the croquet ball wouldn't fit into the sewer pipe exactly. It was a little too big. So we got on our bikes and we, we once again borrowed some tools from Mr. Muldoon. That's Eddie's father. He had once again a, hidden his tools. Um, this time under a bale of hay and uh, um, some gunny sacks and a few boards. <laughs> he was probably worried about burglars breaking in and stealing his tools. Uh, uh, well, we borrowed a sledgehammer and a pry bar. <laughs> and we came back and we pounded that croquet ball down into the sewer pipe. In the enthusiasm of the moment, it was thought that the sledge and the pry bar uh, could, could, could be returned to the tool shed. <laughs> Alas, this too proved somewhat optimistic. <laughs> Finally, we took up positions alongside the cannon, ready to witness the rare and wonderful spectacle of a sewer pipe firing a croquet ball down a golf course fairway. <laughs> we began the firing procedure. <laughs> 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 
Ready. Aim. Four. <laughs> Eddie, nothing happened. Eddie, what's the problem? <laughs> Pat, is this heaven? <laughs> With all that smoke, Eddie, I think this must be the other place. <laughs> the explosion propelled us into the side of a nearby utility shed <laughs> where we remained for quite some time. After a while, we heard sirens. <laughs> this time, they were real. <laughs> we saw a patrol car drive up that fairway. It stopped, and out steps Deputy Sheriff Fred Bone Marrow. <laughs> Deputy Bone Marrow stares down at the flaming patches of turf. Charred 11 by 7s, 4 by 1s, 9 by 16s, and, and of course, completely singed baby carriage wheels. <laughs> Deputy Bone Marrow stares extra long at the baby carriage wheels, as if he recognizes them from someplace. And then, hoisting up his gun belt, he walks over to where we are now ensconced. You two boys, you know anything about an uh, explosion out this way? <laughs> what kind of explosion, officer? A big one. <laughs> he had us cold. I, I was so stunned, I couldn't even think of a good lie. Anyway, on a golf course, there is no such thing as a good lie. <laughs> what I want to know is, how come you two boys are sitting out here behind this shed, smoking? Shucks, officer, if you'd come a little sooner, you could have seen us while we were still on fire. I don't reckon there'll be another explosion anytime soon, will there? <laughs> well, not if we can help it, no. <laughs> Good, you boys best clean up the best you can. I'll, I'll be on my way. Oh, my goodness, what in tarnation have we got? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Too bad about your dog. Right after that, Mr. Muldoon asked, you know, where he could find his tools. We told him holes 9, 7, 16, 1, 3. For a long time after that, every time Mr. Muldoon saw me and Eddie together, one whole side of his face would start to... We finally figured out it had been all the coffee he'd been drinking. 